Hello and welcome to another exciting edition of Best MTG Decks Ever. I am your host, Joseph, and today I'm bringing you a really cool deck. It's very high-powered, very quick. All right, so we've got Rohan, Scion of War, and Rohan, Scion of War reads one colorless, one black, one red, Menace. And here's the ability that we really care about. Tap. Spells you cast this turn that are black and or red cost X less to cast, where X is the amount of life you lost this turn. Activate only as a sorcerer. So essentially... What we want to do is lose a bunch of life on a given turn and then use it to pop off a bunch of spells and then go crazy. Uh, for creatures, we've got some things that will allow us to ramp and get mana. We've got things like Blood Celebrant, which is going to allow us to take advantage of Rowan's commander ability. Pay one black, pay one life, add one mana of any color to your mana pool. And essentially, we could lose as much life as we wanted to. Now, we've got... Two cards here that are pretty important to really wanting to pop off here, and that's Bergy, God of Storytelling, and Stormkiln Artist. When we are popping off, if we have these on the board, it's going to really give us a lot of breathing room to get everything done that we need to get done. Treasonous Ogre works really well because we can pay life and get mana from that. Kyrick, Son of Yawgmoth works really well for this deck. We can pay six life to cast this if we've already taken four damage earlier in the turn. We essentially get to cast this for free. So if we had taken four damage and then we pay six life to do this, now we've taken ten damage this turn. So anything that we want to pour ten into, we can. And then in addition to that, for each black mana in a cost, I can pay two more life to pay that mana. Which means that for something like Torment of Hellfire, we could literally pay life instead of those black pips. And then the 10 damage that we took, well, we could put that into the X. Well, actually, it would be more than 10. Since we pay two life per black pip, if we were to do Torment of Hellfire, we would have 14 to put into X. That's not including the other mana and stuff that we have. So you can see how this deck works. Moving on to sorceries, we've got typical tutors. Reanimate's always good. We can grab a dock side that's in a graveyard, get them out. We actually pay life for that, which gives us damage, which allows us to pay for things cheaper, and it also gives us treasures. We are running lots of spells, which allow us to ramp more. We've got our X spells, like Crackle with Power or Damnable Pack, and we use the damage that we've gotten earlier in the round using the commander's ability, and then we can shovel in a bunch of mana into the X value, which allows us to draw more cards. We would lose more life, increasing the amount of life that we lost this turn, allowing us to do more and more crazy things, as long as we don't die. Exsanguinate is an amazing card for this deck. It reads, two black X. Each opponent loses X life. You gain life equal to the life lost this way. So let's go to the example that we had earlier. We've taken 14 damage. We put the 14 into the X, Everyone loses 14 life, and then we would gain 14, 14, and 14, which would be, I think, doing the math real quick is like 42. We've got some removal here, Feed the Swarm. We are running quite a few draw effects, like Knight's Whisper, Ambition's Cost, Read the Bones. And the cool thing about this is, so say we've taken three damage this turn, Ambition costs one black pip. That's it. So we get to draw three cards. Then we would lose three more life, which would bring our life losses turn to six, which allow us to do more stuff. We are running Tendrils of Agony. In this deck, it's very easy to storm off, and this is a easy way to shut out the game or to gain more life so that we can lose more life to do more trick stuff. Peer into the Abyss, amazing card. If we play it early on, we lose 20 life, and so now X equals 20. So if we were then to be able to cast a Torment of Hellfire, we could pummel in 20 and not to mention all the cards that we draw what we would really want to do is just start spitting out all of the cards which ramp like right of flame or desperate ritual heretic ritual all right moving on to instance we've got stuff to counter some things pyroblast red elemental blast we've got some stuff in here to lose life while also doing doing some creature removal so we could pay four life to cast this that'll be our four damage per turn we get to do stuff with that fire covenant's awesome we can pretty much clear the board of any threats that we want. We take a ton of damage, and that will allow us to do more shenanigans with our commander. Snuff Out's really awesome for this deck because we can pay four life to cast it. We can destroy something, and then that goes into the damage, of course. Ad Nauseum works really well because as we're drawing more cards, we're paying more life, which will allow us to do more things. So if we cast Ad Nause and we're 
we're paying life and say for example we draw a big score well now we've paid for life for big score which means that we activate our commander and now it's only going to cost one red pip and when we pay that one red pip we're going to get to discard two cards draw two cards and create two treasures so now we've actually ramped we've paid one and now we get two treasures so continuing on with that ad nos let's say that we have drawn like 10 cards or something well we can cast inner fire for one red pip and then we'll get one red mana for each card in our hand. So let's say we had four cards in our hand. After we cast Ad Nos, we're able to draw 10 cards. For one red pip, we get 14 red mana, which is going to allow us to continue casting other things like we could then Jessica's Will for one red pip or we could Desperate Ritual for one red pip and it just keeps on going and going and going and we spill out so much mana. For artifacts, we are running a ton of ramping artifacts. We are running a Sensei's Divining Top, which we use in conjunction with Bolas's Citadel. We don't want to brick with Bolas's Citadel, so we basically use Sensei's Divining Top to make sure that we don't get a land, and we just keep cycling with that, paying life to do these cards, and then once we start paying life, well, then we activate our commander, and then we can start doing all of the shenanigans that we talked about earlier. We are also running a Thousand Year Elixir. It is possible that you might get to a point to where you are only able to cast your commander the turn that you're also casting an ad nos or uh, appear into the abyss or something along those lines and thousand year elixir is going to allow you to tap your commander that turn as though it had haste and then you can pop off that turn for enchantments we're really only running two we've got black mark connections which is going to allow us to take up to six damage per turn we could take one three or six necropotence is going to allow us to take a bunch of damage draw a bunch of cards and continue on with the same kind of shenanigans that we were talking about earlier. So the way that we win mostly with this is we want to have our commander on the board, we want to cast something which is going to allow us to start drawing a bunch of cards, which might be like Villas Broker of Blood. We, Whenever we lose life, we draw cards. There's a lot of ways in this deck to lose life, and then it'll start spinning out of control with that. We've got Adnaz, Peer into the Abyss, and Bolas of Citadel, and all of these are going to allow us to just start really going out of control and grabbing a bunch of stuff. All right, so here's kind of like how the win cons work. I've already discussed them with you, but let's just kind of look at it more streamlined. We've got enablers without a payoff in hand. So if we have these, we can cast them and then we should be able to get one of our payoff spells, which will allow us to win the game. So for example, we cast Necropotence, draw a bunch of cards, lose a bunch of life, then we pull an Exsanguinate. We would do as many of those ramp spells as we could in between. Uh, if, if we've set up things really well, we can get a Bergy or a Stormkiln Artist on the board. So while we're casting all those ramp cards, we're also gaining even more ramp, which just gives us more breathing room to do what we need to do. We can Red Elemental Blast and do any counters that we need to stop incoming removal or interruptions. And then we can do something. So we've probably lost a bunch of life at this point. We're probably down to somewhere around like 10 life. And at that point, then we can Exsanguinate for like 30. Everyone takes 30 damage. If they're not dead, we gain like a crap ton of life. We gain like 90 life. And then we can continue on with something like Crackle with Power or Torment of Hailfire and finish everything off. We've got Enablers with Payoff in hand. So say you have Fire Covenant and Exsanguinate in your hand at the same time. We could cast Fire Covenant and we could do 25 damage. And then after that, then we could sink 25 into X, which everyone loses 25 life, and then we gain 75 life. And then at that point, things just start to get out of control. And that's pretty much the deck. It is really awesome. I did a bunch of playtesting with this, and it was able to win on turn three. It really helps to get uh, fetch lands. An ancient tome on turn one is money. So I hope you guys enjoyed this deck, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.